Welcome back to the Bob Harden Show. And now here's your host, Bob Harden. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show, here in the commercial for St. Matthew's House, which is a terrific organization. It reminds me of uh, the Lulabee's Diner, who does a great job of supporting St. Matthew's House, and uh, located in the Green Tree Shopping Center, great breakfast or lunch, visit a Lulabee's uh, Diner. Coming up, we're going to visit with Dave Bego, the author of The Devil at Our Doorstep. Right now we have with us Jessie Kelly. She's with the R Street Institute. Jessie, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Good morning. Good morning, Jesse. Tell us about the R Street Institute. Yeah, the R Street Institute is a nonprofit, nonpartisan public policy research organization, and I work on our criminal justice and civil liberties policy team, where we work across the ideological spectrum to provide policymakers with reform ideas that prioritize human dignity, public safety, and individual liberty. Very noble purpose, Jesse, and uh, sounds like you're having fun with your work with the uh, bounce in your voice. So uh, we have a situation here in Florida. We passed Amendment 4. Amendment 4 provides for felon voting. Uh, One of the strings attached to felon voting is once you've completed uh, your time, You also have to pay off any kind of fines and fees that have been associated with the sentencing, and that's become a real real hot potato here in Florida. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, uh, the R Street Institute signed on to an amicus brief in the case that's been moving through the court system on this issue, Jones versus DeSantis. So we've been paying particularly close attention, and you highlighted the biggest problem, that there's no statewide database of court fees that would bar an individual from voting. And to find out whether or not they owe money, a person would have to check pretty much themselves individually with county court clerks in the place where they were, you know, convicted of a crime. And sometimes courts, you know, human error, have failed to keep accurate records of who owes financial obligations and who's already paid those. So it's, it's, what I'm hearing you say is uh, being able to uh, access the information could be difficult for the state to, uh, to verify the fact that fa- fines or fees have been paid. Just out of curiosity, isn't it? Wouldn't it be appropriate to ask the uh, felon who's looking to vote uh, to make sure that they can check their own records and get to make sure that the uh, fines have been paid? In some cases, I mean, they may not have even attempted to do so. Right. I think that is perfectly fair, and the problem comes in uh, with timeline. So, if you have, if you've been convicted of a crime, say after about. 2002, 2005, then it's quite likely that your records are going to be in some sort of electronic database. But if you have a prior conviction that's before, say, 2000, it might be a little more difficult to find that Mm -hmm. information online. Um, And actually, a couple of Georgetown law professors have built a website to try to help people in Florida. It's called freeourvote.com, and that's really what they're finding. There is a distinct difference in uh, keeping track of those paper records from 20 years ago um, versus more recent convictions and and terms of those convictions. So, uh, Jesse, then, uh, I'm one for law and order, and, uh, you know, this is a constitutional amendment. You don't take these things lightly, uh, and it mandates that uh, people pay their fines and fees. I'm sure you've got a solution in mind. What would you suggest? Sure. I I mean, the solution is that you don't hinge your eligibility to vote based on fines and fees. And certainly people who have committed a crime, I agree with you, um, must, you know, fulfill the punishment that's associated with with breaking the law. Um, But the bottom line really is that no matter what political party you're part of, you know, whether or not you do have a conviction or not, you should know if you're legally of, allowed to vote. Yes. And it shouldn't be so hard because that's, you know, the democracy that we're trying to build. And right now, there's just a lot of confusion with people in Florida about whether or not they can actually, you know, go to the polls legally. And and that's a big question, and I think it produces a lot of fear in people with former, uh, you know, felony convictions because if if you vote illegally, then that itself is another felony. Well, I'm, I'm ignorant about many of these issues. Thankfully, I've not been associated or involved in the judicial, uh, in the system. So, uh, But my question would be, wouldn't a felon uh, know uh, personally whether they owe fees or fines or not? Perhaps. Um, 
Perhaps. Again, it sort of goes back to the timeline of when the offense occurred. But often uh, a person may finish their term of probation or parole and not be done paying off fines and fees. And so when a court seeks to get that money back from an individual, oftentimes they will go through traditional debt collectors. And through the course of years in life, people move and people change phone numbers. And so it can happen that an individual Mm. thinks that because they're not being contacted by the court, they no longer owe these fines and fees. Um, But in fact, that has been transferred over to a debt collector and there are some additional money still owed. Interesting. So again, uh, would your proposition then would be for uh, the courts to forgive uh, this requirement of the law of the of the Amendment Four? Right. So Amendment Four didn't actually articulate itself that fines and fees were part of completing the um, the you know the Amendment Four said you have to complete your sentence, your terms of your sentence, and the state legislature came back in during that next session and added that that meant, in fact, that you had to pay off all your fines and fees. So I think, uh, you know, our position is that that extra legislative action Mm. was unnecessary. Thanks for clarifying that. Uh, Out of curiosity, would it be possible that somebody actually was assessed fines or fees and not given a jail sentence? Oh, certainly. Uh, Yes, especially for misdemeanors. But often if you are not given a jail sentence and a fine and fee, it's quite low. Um, A misdemeanor fine and fee is usually, you know, below $2,000. And I know that sounds like a lot of money, but compared to some of the other fines and fees that are associated with felonies, it's it's on the lower spectrum of things. I understand. Now, a misdemeanor is not a felony, though, is it? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so, uh, uh, again, this is all confusing to me. This is new information. And, uh, Jesse, you make a good, good case. I certainly appreciate your point of view about this. You certainly don't want to be unfair to somebody who's ha- earned the right to, to vote, having paid their debt to society. But uh, I guess I'm still a little stuck on people being able to, to uh, f- fulfill the requirements of the sentence. So we'll see how this all turns out. I, I, again, it's a good thing that I'm not making the decision. I guess the court system will be who Will it be the Supreme Court of, uh, of uh, Florida? So um, right now it's gone back and forth. Uh, yes, I think that, you know, there was a U.S. District Court ruling in May. Uh, and so that's in question about will that be appealed? Uh, will it be appealed to a federal court? Um, and then, you know, maybe will the U.S. Supreme Court have to be involved? So interesting. Uh, I'm sure the R Street Institute has a website. We do. It's rstreet.org, like R in the letter R. rstreet.org is the website. Jesse, just genuinely appreciate your commentary here on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Bob. My pleasure indeed. All right, coming up, we're going to be visiting with Dave Bigo. Dave is the author of The Devil at Our Doorstep. We're going to do that and more right here in the Bob Harden Show on the Bob Harden Broadcasting Network. <laughs> Stay tuned for more of the Bob Harton Show here on the Bob Harton Broadcasting Network. <laughs> 